Captain America, the first Avenger, in 3D movie review. Steve Rogers is a tiny, I'm, I'm talking, you know, a third of a normal man's size young man, but he desperately wants to be in the army. A doctor gives him a chance to by having him volunteer for the super soldier serum. Meanwhile, the Red Skull has some plans that just might prove a bit dangerous for the Allied forces. The film really delivers what you'd expect from a Captain America movie. The super soldier serum very much works. We're not just talking that he's, you know, at the peak of what a man can do. He is slightly superhuman, you know, he can run at the fast, at, at the speed that some vehicles drive at. He, you know, when he slugs someone, they go flying off the ground. The shield is used quite well, and we do get, you know, both the original, you know, kind of curved design, and the round shield. The, you know, we have an excellent villain in Red Skull, played deliciously evilly by Hugo Weaving, who must really be getting accustomed to playing characters that wear masks and talk about, you know, blowing things up. The supporting cast really help heighten the movie and make it more enjoyable and memorable. Tommy Lee Jones is just awesome. Every single time he opens his mouth, something hilarious and quotable comes out. The, the dude looks like about 180 years old by now, and he's still the coolest thing on screen. You know, that's how you do it, you know, you just cast these guys who actually know how to be cool, who don't just pretend to be cool. The dialogue in general is just really great. There's a lot of humor to it, and it just really works. Back to the supporting cast, we have Howard Stark. And yes, this does tie quite heavily into both Iron Man 2 and Thor. So if you've watched those two, you'll get a lot of a lot more enjoyment out of the parts that really heavily reference those two. Howard is Tony Stark's father and he's very much his son's father. Just, you know, very much the Tony Stark kind of character and with him not being the focus, he's kind of just the, you know, the good guys, scientist kind of guy, you know, and he's just as careless as his son. It's a lot of fun. You know, we have a classical beauty female agent. In fact, about the classical thing, this is a period piece, you know, it does take place during the Second World War which I think is a gutsy move because, you know, it would be really obvious to just update the story, you know, and say, oh, it takes place now, but, you know, no. They went with, you know, and they actually kind of poke fun at his status as just originally an icon to, you know, heighten people's spirits during the war and that kind of thing, you know, with sort of propaganda stuff with him. The, as a period piece, it's very well produced. You really believe that you are seeing, you know, the 1940s. Part of what also makes this a lot of fun is that Captain America is not just fighting Nazis, you know. He is fighting super Nazis, you know. It's like Castle Wolfenstein 
or something. Just, you know, strong weaponry, you know, high technology. I'm not going to give anything away, but it's really, really cool. There are some really nifty designs in there. There are some really cool vehicles. The action, admittedly, there's not that much action for the first bit. You know, you do have to sit through a lot of just story and character before the action starts. But there is a pretty good amount of action, and almost all the action really works. And, you know, we get Cap taking on, you know, groups of Nazis and just wiping the floor with them. And, you know, we have some chases. Some of the action also takes pretty unexpected turns. I wasn't expecting a lot of what happened in the action scenes to happen. The, there is not a lot of fighting, though. You know, physical martial arts kind of fighting. The effects are really great, and I think the look is just right. <sighs> the nuance of red that they chose for Red Skull, for example, is just spot on. Because when you have a, a villain whose face is a red skull, you have to get it just right, or it will look extremely silly, and it doesn't. It's quite menacing, and they took a really wise move. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's makeup. It's practical effects is really there. So Hugo Weaving can emote with his face, and he's really good at that. You know, it's like, you know, Jim Carrey in The Mask, or more recent movies, whatever. It really, really works, you know, because he is just a scary-ass guy. The color, again, the nuance of the armor, yes, armor, not tights, although he does start out in them, of Captain America, is again spot on. You know, if it was too bright, it would be difficult to take seriously, you know. And the film is quite comic bookish, but it does, you know, also want to be quite exciting, and it usually really succeeds. The there are a bunch of characters, some of them don't appear for all that much, but just have, you know, slight defining character traits and such. They tend to work, you know, there's not really anyone that you get mixed up with anyone else and, you know, anyone who needs to have an arc or tries to, has. So, that really works. All in all, just a really fun film. One of the best of the leading up to Avengers kinds of films. And it also really, really does lead up to an Avenger, Avengers film. And, you know, really reference, like I said, Thor and Iron Man 2. You know, they're really, really tying these together now. Y yeah. Great pace also. So, yeah. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.